tracking this line of storms that continues to move down towards the southeast. It should impact our area within the next hour or so. It's associated with the cold front that will be sliding on through. But until then, we've got overcast guys with an occasional peak of sunshine. Temperatures are sitting in the 60s to even low 70s. We'll continue to see our temperatures warming on up with showers moving in right around 3 p.m. 74 degrees. I'll time it all out for you coming up in the next 10 minutes. You're watching WRBL News 3 on your side. Straight ahead, heavy police presence at the Synovus Bank on Buena Vista Road in Columbus. A Muskogee County coroner confirms one person has died on the scene. We'll have a live report. Next, former Georgia Senator David Perdue, with the backing of former President Donald Trump, has thrown his hat into the ring to run against Governor Brian Kemp next year. Plus, as the COVID-19 pandemic continues, doctors also raising awareness about the cold and flu season. News 3 Midday starts right now. On your side, this is News 3 Midday. Good afternoon and thank you for trusting News 3. I'm Phil Scoggins. We begin in Columbus where police are investigating a shooting near the Synovus Bank on Buena Vista Road. One person has been confirmed dead. WRBL News 3's Carissa Diagostino joining us live from the scene with more details. Carissa. That's right, Phil. We're outside of the Synovus Bank here on the 4500 block of Buena Vista Road. Now, Columbus Police Chief Freddie Blackman has confirmed to News 3 that there has been a shooting here. Investigations are underway. We arrived here about 11 o'clock. EMS was on the scene, as well as Muskogee County Coroner Charles Newton, who confirmed that there is a death on the scene. Details here are scarce. We do know that they were placing evidence markers throughout the bank parking lot. We counted at least five at this time. That's all the details details we have right now. We'll continue to update you on air and online as more information becomes available. Reporting in Columbus, Carissa Diagostino, WRBL News 3 on your side. All right, thank you so much, Carissa, for that live report. We are keeping an eye on Columbus with two people recovering after being injured in a shooting. That shooting happened on Clay Street and Harbison Drive Sunday evening. Columbus Fire and EMS were on the scene shortly after 630. The scene was dotted with at least 19 evidence markers put in place by Columbus Police. Police say the two victims are expected to be okay. Stay with News 3 on air and online as we gather more details on this developing story. Keeping our eye on Georgia politics, former U.S. Senator David Perdue of Georgia has announced plans to challenge Governor Brian Kemp in the Republican primary next year. In a video posted on Perdue's website, he says he's running for governor to make sure Stacey Abrams is never governor of Georgia. Perdue's announcement comes nearly a week after Democrat Stacey Abrams announced that she would run. Abrams narrowly lost to Kemp back in 2018. Former Senator Perdue lost his Senate seat to John Ossoff in the January runoff election. Perdue has been encouraged to run by former President Donald Trump. Other Republicans who have joined that race include former Democrat Vernon Jones and GOP activist Candace Taylor. We are turning now to the fight against COVID-19. The newly detected Omicron variant has now been detected in Georgia. According to Georgia's Department of Public Health, the person is fully vaccinated and recently traveled from South Africa to their home in Georgia. They reportedly stayed in the Peach State for two days before heading to New Jersey, where they are currently in isolation. No additional Omicron cases have been identified in Georgia at this time, but health officials are working to identify close contacts. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, experts are warning you to not forget about the cold and flu season. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, there were 28,000 flu-related deaths in the 2018-2019 flu season. That decreased by 8,000 from 2019 to 2020 due to social distancing and mask wearing. Doctors are urging folks to not forget about the regular cold and flu season, which can be deadly. Dr. Siraj Abdullah, a Piedmont sports and family medicine physician, says precautions like exercising and getting enough sleep can help build your immune system to guard against the cold and flu. But there's one critical step, he says, can help guard you against flu infection. Preventative wise, though, like I said, the flu vaccination is very, very important. Uh, a lot of people think about flu, it can last for five to 10 days, but sometimes people go into the hospital with flu and they can have pneumonia. So it's very important to uh, try to prevent it. 
Cold and flu season starts around September or October and can last until March. If you're looking for somewhere to get your COVID-19 vaccine or flu shot, the West Central Health District has you covered. Today, the mobile vaccine clinic is set up at the Frank B. Chester Recreation Center. That is off Benning Drive. The clinic will continue until 1 p.m., so you still have time to get there. They'll be administering those flu and COVID shots. Registration for the COVID vaccine is preferred but not required. The department is offering more locations throughout the week, and you can find a full list of those locations by heading to our website at WRBL.com. Before heading to the break, again, we want to thank you for trusting News 3. Coming up, the Biden administration has more travel guidelines put in place to stop the spread of COVID-19. More details coming up right after the break. On your side, you're watching WRBL News 3 Midday. The Biden administration is implementing new travel rules to help combat the spread of the Omicron variant, which is just now starting to take hold in the state. Skylar Henry has more details. Beginning today, all travelers flying into the U.S. will have one more thing to do before boarding their flights. We want to go around roughly three or four times in a circle. Everyone aged two and up will need a negative COVID test at least 24 hours prior to takeoff. Previously, you had 72 hours to get tested. The rules cover vaccinated and unvaccinated passengers, and they also apply to U.S. citizens as well as foreign visitors. We found out just randomly, so now we're like, well, do we wait? Do we do our test today? Do we do it tomorrow? So far, there have been zero deaths reported as a result of Omicron. Thus far, it does not look like there's a great degree of severity to it, but we really got to be careful 
before we make any determinations that it is less severe or really doesn't cause any severe illness comparable to Delta. As of now, all of the cases in the U.S. have been mild, but the variant is already in 17 states and its spread is just getting started. Really what we're going to see is over the next three, four weeks, dramatic increase in the number of cases of Omicron. And it's a perfect storm, right? The weather's getting colder, people are getting together for the holidays. While scientists say there is still much to learn about Omicron, the early indicators out of South Africa show that being vaccinated and boosted is the best defense. If you get boosted, you're going to get your level up way up and we feel certain that there will be a some degree and maybe a considerable degree of protection against the Omicron variant. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio announced this morning that beginning December 27th, all private businesses in the city will need to require their employees be vaccinated. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. Glad to have you along here on News 3 Midday. Nicole keeping an eye on those conditions outside, and they were pretty foggy this morning. Yes, we had some dense fog this morning, but since then we've got overcast skies, occasional peak of sun. I'm tracking a line of storms that's moving closer to the area. Details coming up after the break. Hurt by a big truck? 1-800-CALL-KEN. One call, that's all. On your side, meteorologist Nicole Phillips has your first alert forecast. Well, we had a lot of fog this morning. Here's a look out at Peachtree Mall where you can see the fog there. The car is just driving. Hey, this morning visibility down to less than a mile. At times we even had a dense fog advisory that has ended now. 
And now we're getting ready for the second half of active weather that we've got today, the cold front that will be coming through. So I said this morning, hey, the morning commute would be a little bit tricky. And now here we are getting ready to see what's going to be coming in for our evening commute. So this is the line here of showers and even some thunderstorms that continues to push off towards the southeast. Now it's moving to the southeast at about 45 miles per hour. So still thinking it's going to get here just before two o'clock Eastern time. So if you've got any activities, maybe over the next hour or so, take the umbrella. You're going to need it over the next a few hours because we are going to keep showers and storms right around our evening commute. So here's the reason why we've got the cold front that continues to move off towards the southeast. And when we zoom in a little bit closer, some of the storms that we have could pack just a little bit of a punch. That's really what we've been seeing here where winds up to about 50, 60, maybe even 70 miles per hour. So we've got just this little slither of marginal risk here. The severe stuff staying off towards our west like what you just saw there on the live radar. So tracking the cold front here as we go towards about 3 p.m. That line starting to move in and it continues as we head into our evening commute by 8 to 9 p.m. The front is down towards the south and the rain is out of here. But what happens is it actually stalls out over Tuesday. So that's going to keep some clouds and even a few stray showers in the forecast. It won't actually be until Wednesday that we start to see things moving on out of here more showers and storms, but then it'll actually move out of here and it's just going to set us up for our next system that will come in by Thursday and Friday. So right now as we look outside again, we've got overcast guys and a few peaks of sun shining on through. It's also warm temperature sitting in the middle to upper 60s to low 70s, 72 degrees in America as we just hit 70 here in Columbus and 65 out in Auburn. So your day part forecast will continue to warm up and getting into the middle 70s for this afternoon. Again, the best time for us to start seeing some rain and even some thunderstorms really right around 2 p.m. Eastern time, 1 p.m. Central. That will last through the afternoon, even into this evening. And then again, by 9 p.m., it's out of here. High temperatures before that, though, getting into the middle 70s. Look at America's coming in at 75 degrees. That's above average for this time of the year. So we'll drop down ooh, to the upper 50s on Tuesday, again with a few stray showers, scattered showers, and even a thunderstorm on Wednesday. 64 degrees and then as we head into this weekend, we're back up into the 70s and we're having the chance for a few stray showers and thunderstorms. Short sleeve weather in early December. That's I know. not too bad. It's not bad at all. <laughs> I'm not going to complain. I'm uh, not either. <laughs> Thanks so much, Nicole. Stay with us right here on News 3. Just ahead, a company recalling over 200,000 pounds of ham and pepperoni due to possible listeria outbreak. Consumer News straight ahead.
on your side. You're watching WRBL News 3 Midday. Keeping an eye on consumer news for you this evening, or this afternoon rather, Alexander and Hornig is recalling more than 240,000 pounds of ham and pepperoni products because of a possible listeria contamination. The affected meats were sold nationwide under a variety of brand names, including Welshire and Butcher Boy. The items are fully cooked. They have the establishment code M-101-25 stamped inside the USDA's inspection mark. That meat should be thrown out or returned to the store. For the first time, the head of Instagram will testify on Capitol Hill this week. Adam Masseri will appear before a Senate panel Wednesday for a hearing on protecting kids online. Instagram has been criticized for its negative effect on teens and young users. Last month, he said that Instagram is creating ways for parents to control how much time their kids spend on the app. Saudi Arabia's decision to raise oil prices could send gas prices higher. The kingdom has hiked the cost of crude to the U.S. and Asia by about 80 cents a barrel. Sunday's increase came less than a week after OPEC announced it would continue to boost output. Analysts said that the move suggests Saudi Arabia expects global demand to keep on climbing. That's a look at today's consumer news for you. Nicole will have a final check of your forecast right after the break. Don't go far. On your side, you're watching WRBL News 3 Midday. 
Okay, Nicole, I'm depending on this rain to knock the rest of the leaves off the, the trees in my backyard so I can finally get around to getting all, all, all of them up. Yes, and you'll have some rain and you may even have a little bit of wind that will help you out as well. So when we look at our live radar, I am tracking this line that continues to pull to the southeast. It's moving at about 45 miles per hour. Should make it here in Columbus right after maybe 1.30 or so Eastern time. But if you're going to be heading out, really the big story, grab the umbrella, also pack the patients. We're going to have that with us through the afternoon and into our evening commute. But it'll be cooler tomorrow, 59 degrees, 64 on Wednesday. The rest of this system will be starting to move out on Wednesday, then unsettled for the remainder of the week. 76 degrees again on Saturday. So this is just an up and down pattern fill of our temperatures, and it's honestly going to continue for the next couple of weeks, too, with temperatures like this. Well, we're dodging those 30s at night, so it's not <laughs> going to be you know in December. Sometimes those sneak up on you. But yeah. We're, we're in sort of a mild uh, spurt here heading up to Christmas. So yeah. that's not too bad. And I'm not going to complain no. at all. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Nicole. And we thank you for watching News 3 Midday. I'll see you right back here at 5 4 Central Time on News 3 First Edition.